Hello again, everyone. We are moving right along in our Ansible series. I hope you guys love this series because I'm having a blast doing videos on Ansible. And in the last video, I showed you guys how to run ad hoc commands using Ansible against our servers. And in this video, well, we're gonna do that again. But this time around, we're going to actually run commands that are going to make changes. So let's go ahead and dive into ad hoc commands with elevated privileges. So in the last video, the commands that we ran, they were useful. We could do something like gather information or gather facts, as you see here. And when this runs, it's going to pull a bunch of information about our server, which can be very useful. But again, this doesn't really help us in terms of automation. This is just something that's useful from an information gathering sense, which is what gather facts does, but it doesn't really make any changes to the server itself. Let's go ahead and change that. Let's actually run a command that will make changes. Now the problem here is that we need to run sudo. So if I was to run, for example, on my local workstation apt update, that's going to fail. It tells me permission denied. Why? Because I didn't run sudo. So if I do run sudo, as you already know, that's going to work just fine, assuming I enter the right password here. So anything on a Linux server that makes changes to the server itself is going to require you to either be the root user or use sudo. I'm sure you probably already knew that, but we also have the same problem in Ansible as well. So now I'm going to show you a command that will make changes to your servers. Well, actually this command is going to fail for the same reason that this command fails. So I'm going to show you the Ansible equivalent of that failed command. So what I'm going to do is run ansible all dash m for module. And this time the module we want to run is apt. So this is specific to Debian and Ubuntu and things based on Debian or forked from Debian. But anyway, we're running the apt module, which if you are a Debian or Ubuntu user, you already know that this is how you install or alter the package database. And we've run this a few times throughout the series so far. And dash a for the argument, the argument we want to give it is update underscore cache, and we're going to set that equal to true. So I'm going to press enter, and again, this is going to fail. And basically, it's failing for the same reason. It's telling us fail to lock apt for exclusive operation. Essentially, it's the same thing as running an apt command without sudo, but it's not even essentially the same. It is the same. Because if we need to use sudo to do this on a Linux system, we also need to make Ansible use its equivalent of sudo as well. So I'm going to recall the previous command here, but I'm going to add a little bit to it. I'm going to add some more options. Here at the end, I'm going to type dash dash become, and then dash dash ask dash become dash pass. And I should have a link in the bottom in the description below this video that is going to take you through to a wiki article for this video and the others as well. So if you want to go ahead and copy the command or if you think something isn't running right, you want to compare what you are typing against mine, you can go ahead and check that out. Again, the link will be in the description. But here I'm adding two options, dash dash become and dash dash ask dash become dash pass. So I'll press enter and it's asking me for the become password. I'll type the sudo password, which is basically the password for my user account and press enter. And we're already getting some pretty useful results here. So what exactly happened and what exactly is this command doing? So if I scroll up here, we can see that I'm using the apt module. So dash M, it basically has me give it a the name of a module. The apt module allows us to work with apt packages on a Debian based system. Dash A allows us to use an argument to that module. And what we're using here is update cache equals true. So what this essentially is, 
is basically the same thing as running sudo apt update. It did make changes to our servers, but all it did was update the package index. So it's not really a very important change, but it was successful because we typed dash dash become, which basically allows us to elevate the privileges. By default, it's going to use sudo. There's other methods that you can use with become. We're not going to go into that. Sudo is the default. And now that we're running this with sudo privileges, we need to be able to apply a password to it. And that's where dash dash ask dash become pass right here, the last option, that's where that comes into play because it asked us for the become password. And since sudo is the default, then that means the sudo password is what we need to give it. Now, if we have a different sudo password on our servers, this is going to fail. Now, later on in the series, we're going to address that. But for right now, I'm going to assume that on each of your servers, you have the same sudo password, which is why this is able to work. And on each, we can see that it says changed true. So that means it was able to update the package database or the package index. The command was successful. So now I'm going to pause for a moment to point you guys to something that is very useful. Yes, I will have a link to a wiki article in the description below, and that's going to be pretty useful to you guys, but not as useful as the official documentation. You can see that I've pulled up the documentation for the apt module, as you see right here. It allows us, well, to manage apt packages. And if you scroll down here, you get a list of the arguments. Now, the one we ran, I scroll down here, was this one. That is the argument that we ran. We set it equal to yes. And as you can see here, it's running the equivalent of apt get update. Well, technically, you don't need the dash get anymore. Just apt update is fine. But using this, we were able to actually make some changes to our servers, even if the changes we made were just to update the package index. But as you can see here, their documentation is very useful. It gives you all the options that we have for the module apt, as you can see it's titled right here, these are all the things that we can do with that. So that gives us a lot of flexibility. Now let's go ahead and have some fun. How about we install an actual package onto all of our servers with one command? And this is going to be pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and type it out. So here's the command. Again, we are using Ansible. Obviously, that's the title of this series after all. We're targeting all of our hosts here with the module apt. We want to use the apt module on all of our hosts. The dash A or argument we want to give it is name equals vim hyphen nox. Now this is basically my favorite version of vim, my favorite text editor. This is something that I do install on all of my servers. Dash dash become. And that's because, again, we need sudo privileges to install packages. And that's what that does. It basically elevates us to have sudo privileges for this command. And then dash dash ask dash become pass, just like that. And we should be able to press enter. Let's see if this works. I'll type in the password here. And it looks good to me, right? So if I go here to server one, we have vim. And if I do apt search vim hyphen nox, we can see that the status is installed. Same thing here. Same thing here. I promise that wasn't installed before. The command that we ran which is this one right here, allowed us to basically target each of these servers and install a package on them, vimnox, that's what we were able to do. And as another exercise, I could change that to tmux, that's another package that I do install on pretty much everything here. So I just change the package name and then enter again, type in the password, and it's going to run this on each of the servers in our inventory list. And actually, I, it looks like I already installed tmux on each of the servers. It says changed 
false. No changes were made. Why? Because I already installed Tmux. I actually forgot that I did that, but I'm glad that I did and that this shows no changes so you can see what it looks like because even if we run the original command to install Vimnox, we'll get the same thing because this time that package is already going to be found on each of the servers. So it's going to say again, changed false because no changes were necessary. And that's actually very important here because we only want there to be changes if there are actual changes that are necessary. So what Ansible is going to do is bring our machines, our servers to a defined state. We'll create playbooks with commands like maybe users that need to be created or packages that need to be installed. And if those requirements are already met, it's not going to show a change for those things, only for the things that actually did have a change in order to bring the machine current with a defined state. If I go to any one of these servers here, and then into the var log directory, we actually have an apt folder right here. And this is for logging changes with apt. I'm going to cd into that. And we have a history log file right here. You can see it, history.log. And we can see right here, the command line that was actually ran when I went to install vim nox earlier. And this log file, history.log, under the apt folder inside the var log folder, shows you all the changes that were made to the system via apt, all the package changes. So we can actually follow along and see what the heck Ansible actually did which means Ansible is not doing any magic. Well, you could think of it as magic, but it's not. Ansible is actually using the built-in apt binary, the apt command on the server when it does go to install a package, as you can see here. It even shows in the log file for apt itself. How cool is that? Now, I'm going to clear the screen here, and every time I run sudo apt update, it's telling me that I actually have some packages that are basically available to be updated. I have 23 of those. I'm not going to finish the command, but I could do sudo apt dist upgrade. And it shows me a list of packages here that are actually available to be updated, like I mentioned. So I'm going to show you essentially how to do the same thing with Ansible. Now, it doesn't matter what package you use to achieve this. I'll just choose snapd as an example. I'll go back to the workstation and then I'll recall the previous command we used and I'm going to change the name to snapd and let's go ahead and run this right now and just see what happens. I'll type the become password. Now the result on each is changed false. That means that this package is already installed on all of the servers. Now that package snapd, as you can see, it's right here. It's showing that an update is available for that package. So what we can do is recall this command and we can actually go ahead and update that as well. So what we're gonna do is put quotes around this right here. Because if you are going to have more than one argument, you do need quotes. And the other argument we're going to add is state equals latest. I'll press enter. And we can see that it's actually updating the package on the servers. And it's done. So I'll go back to this one right here. And notice again, snapd is on the list of packages that can be updated. I'm going to recall this command right here. And now you'll notice that snapd is no longer on the list because when we ran the argument, state equals latest, as you see right here, that's going to make sure that the package that's installed and we told it what package we want to install by giving it name equals snapd, it's going to make sure that it's the latest version available, which means it'll go ahead and update it if necessary. Let's have a little bit more fun here. Let's go ahead and use a different argument altogether. I'm going to take all of this off right here, and I'm going to type upgrade equals dist. 
Now you probably already knew I was going to go this direction, but what I'm going to do is install all of the updates on each of the servers. So I'll press enter, and then the password again. And let's see what happens. All right, so it looks like that was a success. But back on server two, if I Clear the screen and run sudo apt dist upgrade. It shouldn't show that any updates are necessary at all or even available at all. And there you go. Well, what about this one? sudo apt update. Nothing. And again, nothing, because we were able to use one command, which was this one right here, to install all of the updates on all of the servers in the inventory list. So one command installed all of the updates on all the servers. We've updated all the things with Ansible. That's pretty sweet. So at this point, I would go ahead and commit all of the changes that we've made to the repository so far up to GitHub. But in this particular video, we didn't actually make any changes, so there's no need to do that. So, in the next video, we're actually going to create our first playbook, which is basically what Ansible is all about. Playbooks are in the YAML format. They allow you to create basically a list of commands or a text file with some plays in it that define the desired state. And then Ansible will basically get the server to that state. And we're going to get a taste of that in the next video. And that one should be on my channel already. So definitely check it out. I will see you there.